Hey all, here OS Reviews. At this point, the stock version of Android 12 isn't anything new. It's been on Pixel phones for over 8 months now, but as is often the case in the Android world, third-party manufacturers can be pretty slow at pushing those updates over to their phones if they push updates at all. However, finally, we now get a stable version of Oxygen OS 12 that is officially available through over-the-air updates on many of OnePlus's phones, so today I thought it would be nice just to take a quick look at some of the differences and my thoughts on using this newest version. So one thing to keep in mind here is as Caro Pei, the co-founder of OnePlus, has left the company and started nothing, the ties between OnePlus and Oppo have become increasingly blurred. In fact, both of these companies are under the same parent brand and hardware specs are often shared. But the software was at least one area where Oxygen OS tended to go a little more pure, but it can definitely be said that on Oxygen OS 12, it's closer than ever than Color OS 12, with many features, even visual cues, borrowed between one another. And so it is a pretty big difference coming from Oxygen OS 11. Notably, everything is just a little bit more colorful, slightly more animated, and even some of the settings have been rearranged. The accent theme has also been tweaked, it looks like, to be blue out of the box as opposed to red. And even some of the placement of settings have also changed. If we take a look at About Device, for instance, previously OnePlus made it pretty easy to get a snapshot view of your system specs at the top and other stats at the bottom here, but now you will be able to see if you have software that's up to date, and then some of that information is then scattered across the other areas, which I personally think might not be quite as concise as the previous generation software, but it is what it is. Now one kind of funny glitch, even though this is now the official stable version of the software pushed over the air automatically, is there still seems to be some bugs when it comes to displaying system specs. For instance, this phone here is the N200 5G, a budget phone here in the US that has received this update. Other older phones from OnePlus, including the 7 Pro, 7T Pro, will also be getting the update soon. But you can see here that the Nord N200 5G is being displayed as having a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 processor, which is something I wish, but unfortunately not the case. It's using a Snapdragon 400 series chip uh, since this is a budget phone at the end of the day. So it seems like some of that stat information has been just not correctly labeled. Now one thing that you will be able to access in the settings now though is more easily toggle the virtual RAM. So you're able to, for instance, expand the RAM on the phone up to additional, let's say, 3 gigs by using the storage space to simulate the RAM. Other noticeable differences include the track down notification shade, so you can still swipe down from the middle there to pull up the quick launch shortcuts, but again accents being blue instead of red. And more noticeably, you can also pull on the right hand corner to access kind of this quick command center of other widgets that you're able to quickly view at a glance, including steps, weather, as well as notes, and search those up. That is one particular function that you won't find on the Oxygen OS 11 experience. The built-in notes app has also seen some welcome new features, including the ability to now transcribe speech into text, which is actually quite useful. I can then press on the voice icon here to begin recording. Hello, this is an example of the notes taking app using voice on the Android 12 UI. We'll stop that there, and you can see that it is actually decent in terms of getting uh, most of the cues as well as capitalization and syntax correct, some small punctuation errors, but really not bad, and this is quite a handy feature that is welcome here. You can also play it back, and Hello, this is a example. although the voice recordings are limited to five minutes in terms of their maximum length. Now, of course, we can also see that the difference in keyboard is also something that can be observed, but this one is not really unique to Oxygen OS, rather it's something that's system-wide with Android 12 versus 11. So the stock Gboard has also seen a facelift by having these rounder, more cartoonish characters. You can also doodle and draw and have some of those additional commands checklist at your disposal. Down below there you can even translate between different notes uh, for various languages. Now we can also take a look at how the system drawer has some slight differences in that uh, before you're able to use the kind of slider here to quickly go through the different apps here just by their name one by one. Uh, on the Android 12 experience, we have that labeled a little bit more clearly, and more importantly, as you are swiping down, you see also the apps kind of appear there in real time through the different letters and spellings uh, that they are categorized by, which is actually a pretty cool visual effect. 
And by the way, you're also able to sort by the installation time, the most used to reshuffle the order as well, which is pretty thoughtful. Otherwise, we can also see that the multitasking drawer is mostly similar with some slight differences. Before there was this little dot that indicates which app you're currently on, and you're also able just to swipe back and forth between the open apps like so. On the new experience, again, the buttons and icons are just a little bit larger, a little bit more colorful, going for the whole both ColorOS inspired look as well as native Android 12, by default being a little bit more personality filled. So you don't see that dot anymore, but you're still able to multitask and kind of swipe between the different areas here to jump back and forth between your currently open apps. Camera app also allows us to access the Google Lens now directly inside, as well as some other touch-up and markup options, including special effects and filters can now be a little bit more easily accessed directly from this home page. Shutter button here also sees the colors inverted just a little bit, but these are more minor details, I'd say. Other tweaks are mostly on the UI level, so a little closer to both Android 12 and ColorOS, including the built-in file manager you can see, now has this uh, pie chart dashboard view on the top instead of having the grid-like icons uh, on the previous version of the UI, but just a small difference. Clock app, again, it's mostly just the accent colors that have changed, including the clock here sees a slight difference in the design. As far as kind of widgets and controls are concerned, we do have a little bit more of granular access that you can tweak directly from the home screen now, including the ability to also change the icons and how they look, as well as the layout, making more grids and icons display on one page versus less, whether you want the corners of the icons to have a certain shape or round it off. One of my favorite features by far though has to be tucked away under wallpapers, where it leverages some of the tricks found in Android 12, giving us more system-wide personalization of dominant colors based on your priorities and preferences. So if we tap on interactive wallpapers, this is a really cool feature where you're able to generate custom wallpapers using dominant colors that you can pick up with the camera. For instance, let's try and tap on the camera lens here and note that we have kind of an orange color power bank next to a black box. So let's try and kind of tap on this to focus and then snap the shot. It will then start to kind of analyze the shot in terms of the properties of the photo uh, as well as the different colors. So it's doing some of that computation now. And then when we are satisfied, we'll see that it will then give us some suggestions in terms of wallpaper. So here we are. Dominant colors of the orange as well as the black have been picked up, and these are kind of the custom wallpapers that it has generated using some of the AI and ML processing, which is actually really clever, I have to say. Really, aside from that, everything else that is baked onto this experience is similar to other stock Android 12 phones, including access to, say, the aforementioned privacy dashboard, where you're able to see, just like on Pixel devices, how long you've used a microphone and camera. You can also disable certain uh, hardware settings like these. So all of those improvements that are baked into Android 12 by default, of course, can be found under additional settings when you are just digging a little bit deeper, but that is pretty much uh, the main software differences that I have observed. They also tout the ability to change between profiles or themes on the phone now, so you can switch between a desktop for work versus one for entertainment and play, but that's not necessarily, I would say, a brand new feature. We've seen that on other Android launchers, uh, even going back many years now, but it is something that is found on Oxygen OS now as well. And the experience of using the phone hasn't gone slower or anything like that, although it does occupy about 2-3 to three gigs of space when you are upgrading to this newest Oxygen OS 12. So in terms of fluidity and battery life, all these other features seem to be mostly retained. So when it comes down to the question of whether you should upgrade, I would say it kind of depends on personal preference. Android 11, Oxygen OS 11 is a little more clean in terms of some of the icons as well as the settings drawer and definitely has a little bit more of elegance and kind of legacy thought and design stemming from the early days of OnePlus. So if you're more of a purist, I would say even on this previous version is fine if you just want to update the security patch for instance and you'll be perfectly good. However, I would say the Oxygen OS 12, even though it did receive a bit of flack in the beginning for being too similar to Color OS 12, may not be as bad as people think. There's certainly some elements here that I do like, including the personalization of those wallpapers, pretty cool there, as well as the AI voice recognition notes. It does seem like it's just getting a little bit smarter. So if you are interested in that, you can just, of course, download it. It's just a click away. You can check out more details if interested in the links below, as well as our reviews on both of these phones the Nord N200 5G and the OnePlus 7 Pro. Uh, but for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.